Ready for the test? After a brief lull following the FAA's confirmation that the test date for the second Starship flight is now in the hands of the Fish and Wildlife Service or the FWS, SpaceX is now ready to start conducting ground tests of the world's most powerful rocket yet again. Starship test campaign continues. Boost the test set mystery solved. Falcon Heavy launches a breakthrough mission and NASA surprises us with new OSIRIS-REx revelations, and Starship updates. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St Here we are again with the second orbital Starship. It's been just six months since the inaugural launch and we are on tender hooks for round two of the most powerful rocket ever constructed. You see those busy bees working hard on the booster's forward dome? But fully stacked while the team prepares for a launch rehearsal, we continue to work with the FAA on a launch license, the company announced yesterday. After putting Ship 25 back on Booster 9 at the launch pad, the huge test can take place as soon as today. Last week, the company informed the Coast Guard that it plans to conduct ground testing on Starship this week. According to the Coast Guard, SpaceX has informed the U.S. Coast Guard of ongoing testing at their facility located south of Brownsville, Texas near Boca Chica Beach starting on Tuesday, October 17, 2023. A notice to mariners that is our seafaring equivalent of an airspace's notice to airmen. Essentially it's a stay outside for sailors ensuring they don't accidentally sail into, well, a potential Starship fireworks display. The closed area is just too small for a safe booster splashdown. Static fire of the booster sounds offbeat. Especially considering that Booster 9 had its fair share and trust me every such firing carries the dreaded oh no we have to replace a Raptor risk. But what if just if by the time you're seeing this the Starship was restacked? Odds are this not Mar was or is for a glamorous wet dress rehearsal. Think of it as a rocket's ultimate test. Tanks brimming with propellant a near complete countdown but no firing of the engines. Everything just stops a few seconds before the liftoff in preparation for the real deal. Swinging back to that nut mar there is one more contender in the ring. A static fire a ship 26 that's chilling at suborbital pad B. The restricted area for such a small test is on the broader side, but perhaps SpaceX is thinking better safe than sorry, right? The clock for the road closure is ticking from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Texas time. Assuming that nothing changed and you are watching this on the day of the premiere the road should be closed right now. During testing, a hazard area will exist in the vicinity of the SpaceX facility extending into South Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. The area below represents the U.S. waters portion of the hazard area SpaceX identified as susceptible to potential hazards including blast pressure, debris, gaseous leaks, and fires during the tests. The state also matches road closures granted to SpaceX for its test site in Boca Chica with October 17 being the primary date and the following two days being backup opportunities. The local government's notice for the closure confirms that the test activities will be non-flight. So how can you know if that's the real deal and we're about to see some methane action? Look out for the notice to Boca Chica villagers about an overpressure event. This heads-up typically appears a day before any testing that includes methane. It lets everyone in the area know that in the worst-case scenario SpaceX will pay for their new windows. Going back to Ship 20 SIXS Hangout the suborbital testing site. We're finally cracking the enigma of the construction near the tank farm. The mystery was solved after our newest flyover thanks to Redline Helicopter who make it possible. Want to book your own ride at Starbase and find the latest mystery or just enjoy one of the coolest views in the world? You'll find the link below I highly recommend it. In our latest speculation session we talked about this spot being either covered with concrete to mitigate dust or in here's the thrilling bit a new test pad for the boosters. As much as we'd love a fresh testing playground it turns out it's just Starbase's newest parking lot. So our dust busting theory? Not that much of the mark it seems. Currently a good chunk of the launch site crew park their cars on the side of Highway 4. Though if you'd ask me I would leave my car there during a static fire. As the test phases for both vehicles at the launch site draw to a closed SpaceX is already stacking up on next-gen prototypes and that brings our focus to the build site. You remember what I told you the last time we were. Here right? 
about how the ship's nose cone often kick-starts its production? Well rewind to October 11th. Back then Ship 32's nose cone waltzed into the highway closely shadowed by its payload. Section Fast forward less than three hours later and voila! Both segments are made to beginning the production of this prototype. The following two days serve as backup opportunities. It's important to note that the tests conducted will be non-flight activities meaning it will be a crucial step towards preparing the Starship rocket for its next test launch. As SpaceX declared, it seems that the rocket could face a long delay as it waits for the FWS to approve changes to the launch pad after the first test flight attempt in April. Musk's company has made dozens of system-level upgrades to Starship since the April flight and these primarily involve the rocket's engines, its propulsion system, and fire suppression capabilities. Most of the failures during the first Starship test involved its engines and the engine bay as SpaceX tried to fly a rocket with 33 engines for the first time in its history. The test also saw serious damage to the launch pad and while some had predicted that Starship would have to be grounded for more than a year as SpaceX rebuilt the pad, the firm quickly installed a fire suppression system and tested it through a static fire. That Starship orbital launch attempt is a critical event not only for SpaceX, which is counting on Starship to further reduce launch costs and increase launch cadence, but also for NASA. The agency has provided SpaceX with more than $4 billion US dollars in awards through its Human Landing System, or HLS program, to develop versions of Starship to land astronauts on the moon for its Artemis lunar exploration campaign. The agency is closely following SpaceX's Starship tests. I'm just thoroughly impressed by the scale of these pictures and what the vehicle looks like in an integrated stack, sat Ryan Joyce of NASA's Langley Research Center, who was working on HLS during a panel discussion on the 23rd of January at the AIAA SciTech Forum, showing several images of Starship development. We are literally trying to launch skyscrapers here. NASA's insight into Starship development includes having astronauts visit to ensure that the vehicle can be safely operated by them. This is ultimately a vehicle that needs to be operated by the astronauts, he said. If you don't have the conversations with astronauts as crew members and operators of the spacecraft during the design phase, you might get far enough along with your design before you find your vehicle is inoperable. As SpaceX conducts Starship tests at Boca Chica, it's constructing a new Starship launch facility on the grounds of Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. The tower for that launch pad now overshadows the existing pad used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches. It's very exciting to see the progress being made at SpaceX facilities right now, including at KSC where they're building a second orbital launch capability, he said. NASA's HLS awards leave it up to SpaceX to conduct its lunar lander launches either from the KSC or Boca Chica, he noted. In short, we hope that today's test can bring Starship closer to its goal, reaching orbit and splashing down in the Pacific. In another piece of important news, Axiom Space's third private astronaut mission is on track for a liftoff next year. Houston-based Axiom Space's AX-3 flight remains on track for a launch toward the International Space Station no sooner than January of 2024. The four crew members, including a former NASA astronaut, a European Space Agency reserve astronaut and a passenger who flew to suborbital space with Virgin Galactic earlier this year, spoke with journalists on Monday, October 16 about their excitement. I'm very happy to be a part of this mission and this great crew. Swedish astronaut Marcus Want said during the live-streamed press conference emphasizing that Axe 3 will include representation from government and industry alike in his country. I'm also proud of being trusted by Sweden and Europe to represent Sweden in space and throughout this mission, which to me is so much more than the 14-plus days in space and my background as a fighter pilot and test pilot as well. Axe 3 will launch to the ISS from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida using SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket. Axiom signed an agreement with SpaceX in 2021 to launch three additional crews to space after the pioneering mission Axe 1, which flew in April of 2022. Additionally, SpaceX is the only fully certified commercial spacecraft for NASA missions so far. He will be led by former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria a dual U.S.-Spanish citizen who also commanded Axe-1.
I'm also proud of being trusted by Sweden and Europe to represent Sweden in space and throughout this mission, which to me is so much more than the 14 plus days in space and my background as a fighter pilot and test pilot as well. AXE 3 will launch to the ISS from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida using SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket. Axiom signed an agreement with SpaceX in 2021 to launch three additional crews to space after the pioneering mission AXE 1, which flew in April of 2022. Additionally, SpaceX is the only fully certified commercial spacecraft for NASA missions so far. He will be led by former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria a dual U.S. Spanish citizen who also commanded Axe one He will be joined by Wandt, who was called up from his reserve astronaut status when assigned to Axe 3 Italian Air Force Colonel Walter Vallade who flew to suborbital space. On Virgin Galactic's first commercial launch this past June and Turkey's first citizen in space, Alper Jesarafi. It will be Lopez Alegria's sixth space mission, Vallade's second and the first for Wandt and Jesarafi. Lopez Alegria said the training is going smoothly and that the crew has learned a lot since Axe 1. When other ISS astronauts had to step in to help the crew with their tasks, he said Axe 1 was a startup mission accomplished on an aggressive timeline and that Axiom Space has matured its process since that time. When the follow up mission, Axe 2, in May of 2023, Commander and former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson was tasked with fewer responsibilities to give her time to help the crew. If you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up, and subscribe see you in the next video, thanks for watching. By the way are you familiar TalkTalk Talk Philippines app, TalkTalk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the TalkTalk Talk app, here down below.